so uh, changing gear just a little bit uh, on the uh, small startup side, an announcement that really got our attention was uh, this new company called Hume AI, uh, started in 2021 by Alan Cohen, former Google guy. Uh, they are working on this thing called um, emotional or uh, like a more uh, having a more uh, empathic AI, uh, really focusing on uh, emotional inputs and outputs and getting the feelings associated with AI. Right. And I'm curious what there got your attention. Well, so what's interesting about it is so we've had things like, you know, um, intent recognition for a long mm -hmm. time. Right. However, that intent recognition, generally speaking, has come in the form of what words we are using. What what is interesting, there's two really interesting things about uh, Hume's announcement. The first is it's it's all voice based, right? So it is it is effectively saying there's this entire layer of subtext in our voice, which of course as humans we all know, right? When when I say a word to you, how I say it and the inflections I use with my voice is an entire data layer. It's communicating all of this sort of nonverbal elements as far as not the words I'm using. And so it's trying to capture all of that and leverage it to understand the emotional sub layer of a conversation. And so I think that it's it, this isn't a huge step in my mind, um, insofar as you know we we've already had this idea of understanding intent, but I think it's a it's a pretty big leap in it, in being able to harvest this sort of data and doing it at scale. There are other companies that have been doing this in the call center space for a while in different forms, and so which leads to the second thing I think is really interesting is that they are not attempting to provide their own LLM or attempting to provide their own interface directly. They're an API-driven solution, so the idea of being embedded into other systems mm -hmm. as a way to add this contextual layer. So, uh, you know, I think the jury is out as to uh, whether or not in and of itself this is a game changer. But what I think kind of tying into everything we just talked about, it's another sign of how the market is evolving and how we're going to continue to see greater differentiation and 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 extended use cases that right now we maybe aren't necessarily imagining. So um, I think that, um, in fact, I should have grabbed him to remember, you know, we, we all consume so much information. I sometimes lose it, but I was mm -hmm. talking, or maybe it was this article talking about how, you know, there's iRobot, one of my favorite movies, right? The, with the Will Smith, where these robots that are interacting and this idea of having that layer where they're interacting like a human would, well, this type of software is going to be critical to achieving that at some point. And I think it's going to be really important when we think about anything to do with the customer experience, anything that I'm going to stick a piece of robotic automation in whatever form in front of a customer, I need that that element. So whether or not it's Hume or how that gets played, um, I, I just think it's an interesting sign of how things are developing. Yeah. So I have to admit, I always have my doubts about uh, something that is called emotional or empathic. And looking at the um, approach that Hume AI takes, um, you know, the founder uh, has an advanced degree in computational psychology. So obviously is much smarter than I am, has thought about this problem to a greater extent than I have. But uh, in the approach that he seems to be taking, it seems to be very uh, specific uh, responses, like, uh, like responding to specific words with some sort of emotional um, output. And I wonder if the uh, approach might be too granular because when we have emotional responses, they tend to be systemic, you know, based on uh, both what we've heard and what we see and what we feel and our gut reaction based on a whole set of historical um, circumstances. It, it's not basically saying, uh, you know, bad is bad. As Michael Jackson taught us, sometimes bad is good. <laughs> um, you know, just simple things like that. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not so sure on Hume specifically. I, I'm looking at this directionally, right? If I look at the way OpenAI, at least what they have out publicly or any of the others, if you hit the little microphone, all they're doing is they're using the voice interface to simply translate your words into text and then processing that text, right? That's all it's doing today. And so what I think about this is interesting is that, is that Hume is attempting to add another layer, right? And I, I, I agree, I don't think we're, you know, this is, you know, probably not even 1.0 yet, right? In terms of where it's at, 
but directionally, I think it's just interesting because what I where I see this leading us to is two things. One is something that I believe we're going to end up in a, with a long time, and that is a voice first, um, you know, architectural interface. Right, that that we are going to move away from everything being text driven and move to everything being voice driven. And secondly, that it's not going to be voice driven simply by converting to text, but that our voice actually becomes that additional data layer. And so that's to me, I look at this as directional more than, hey, Hume is really nailing it. Um, and I think it just, it, it's it's a sign of the evolutionary process of where this technology is going. Yeah, and I, I've looked at some startups in this space in the past, uh, like uh, formerly a company called Conjoya, started by uh, Armin Berjerkley that uh, was, was uh, been acquired. Uh, there's a startup right now called Textio that really focuses on job applications and employee feedback and make sure that you are not being a jerk when you are talking to your employees or responding I can to use that with a few of my former bosses. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's a great use case. Um, so, but seeing this general use case uh, is going to be an interesting, uh, you know, starting point uh, for. Uh, to see how far it can really go. Uh, right now, I feel like sometimes we're trying to paper over everything, everything by saying Gen AI <laughs> and hope that it solves everything. But uh, you know, the next couple of years are going to actually show what is useful uh, and where the use cases really are as we're going to be digging into a bit <laughs> later.